Despite radical eco-opposition and attempted interference by groups like Amnesty International, construction of the Site C hydroelectric dam is well underway just outside of Fort St. John, BC. If you've been following my reporting on this file, you'll know that I'm a very strong supporter of this project for a number of reasons. First, British Columbia has a long history of successful large hydroelectric power installations. And second, this is a region of our province decimated by the downturn in oil and gas and it will provide jobs for those out of work in the region, and for many Albertans as well, with an opportunity to get back to work with a similar high paying wage. With all that in mind, I caught up with the minister in charge of Site C at the BC Liberals convention over the weekend, Bill Bennett. Minister Bennett, like many of the rural BC members of the BC Liberal caucus, is a true blue conservative. I think you will enjoy our discussion on not only Site C, but as well as Minister of Mining, he had an interesting take on one, St. David Suzuki. Mr. Bennett, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Um, let's start with uh, a couple things in your file, but let's start with Site C. Um, can you give us an update on uh, w what's going on up in the Peace River region with the, the construction? I understand that they just completed the temporary work camp that's uh, going to be housing all the workers up there. Yeah, um, it's an $8.335 billion project. Uh, we've got a, an extra contingency um, that they could access uh, if they go through Treasury Board of 440 million, but it, it doesn't look like they're going to have to do that. Um, of the 8.335 billion uh, that's there for the project, um, about just a little more than four billion dollars um, has been committed uh, through uh, contracts, um, and a little over a billion has actually been spent. So you know when you when you look at uh, you know eight billion dollars for construction, a lot of that being. Uh, inflation and, and, and interest costs and so forth. The actual construction budget is considerably less than that. So to have four billion uh, committed, on, you know, on budget is uh, augurs well for the project. So it's you know it's it's in its uh, second year, early in its second year. The work camp was just completed. It, it's a it was a, a big project, a very uh, very fancy uh, digs, you know, for for workers. But you know, it was designed. Um, at a time when the oil sands uh, was still going strong and, and uh, you know, that will come back and there'll be more competition for workers uh, before Site C is finished. It's an eight-year project. So it's, in terms of the construction, it's going extremely well. And maybe you could just uh, tell our viewers, uh, what's been the government's policy or how many of those contracts that you're talking about go or, are going to First Nations contractors up in the region? Because we hear a lot of the opposition to, to the project from groups like Amnesty International, who, it, you know, who, who are insisting that it, it, it's First Nations communities that are actually being affected negatively by projects like this. Talk a little bit about the, your government's position at giving those contracts to First Nations uh, uh, contractors. Well, I mean, we're, we're sensitive to the reality that when you build a large hydroelectric project, there's disruption, there's definitely an impact on, on the ground. And, you know, there's millions and millions of trees being removed and there's an area that will be flooded. But, you know, everything uh, is, uh, has to be looked at, I think, in, 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 the, in the right perspective. And, and the reservoir size for Site C um, is much, 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 much smaller uh, than the reservoirs upstream for the other dams and of course Site C will benefit from the water that's held back in these other uh, reservoirs. Nonetheless, there's an impact and, and so the Treaty 8 First Nations, uh, some of them are still you know, going to court. There's a couple uh, that are still in, in court but uh, the majority now of First Nations either have an agreement with BC Hydro, a, a, a benefits agreement, um, or are in the process of, of discussing, negotiating a, a benefits agreement with BC Hydro. Lots of First Nations contractors working, lots of uh, road builders. Uh, one of the security companies actually is a First Nations owned uh, company. And when Hydro uh, conceived of this project and, and designed it, uh, they left space within the budget for some direct awards to make sure that First Nations contractors did get opportunities. And uh, there's hundreds of First Nations people working on the site right now. That's great to hear. Um, I know uh, Amnesty International in particular has come out against uh, the project, but overall, how, how, do you, how do you view the sort of opposition to a project like this, given many of these environmental groups at the same time as they oppose Site C also tell us that we can't use fossil fuels for energy and then tell us we need electric cars, but how are we going you know, to get that energy if we don't do ma major hydroelectric projects and if we are to phase out fossil fuels over time? I mean, I, I just have a trouble squaring that circle sometimes, so maybe, maybe you have some insight for us. Yeah, well, I'm the minister responsible for both mines and, and for electricity in, in the province, so I, I deal with folks that, you know, don't, don't think we should be doing any mining, but, uh, you know, they're talking on their cell phones and using their laptops and their iPads and driving their Beamers and, 
you know, everything in their life comes out of the ground, basically. And, and so, you know, would you rather that mining take place in, in, you know, some developing nation where maybe you don't have the same environmental uh, standards that we do here in Canada? Um, with respect to Site C and the electricity, last year our electricity in the province was 98% clean and renewable. Um, that's pretty damn good. I mean, there's other provinces around, you know, like Alberta that are going to try to have 30% renewable by 2020, and good for them. They're going to just place some some coal. We're at 98% renewable right now, and we've made a commitment to go to, to 100%. There's a, there's a reason why Quebec, Manitoba, and British Columbia have the lowest electricity rates in Canada, and some of the lowest in North America, and it's because we, we depend on large hydro. It is the most effective, efficient, economical way to generate electricity if you're fortunate enough to have the opportunity to do that. Last question, I am glad to hear you bring up uh, you know, opposition to mining. I don't know if you heard recently David Suzuki, he called Canadian mining disgusting and uh, that we have some of the worst mining companies in the world. As Minister in Charge of Mines, how, how do you react to something like, like that that seems so purposefully inflammatory to say something like that from David Suzuki? Well, I mean, I think you have to look at the record of uh, Canadian mining uh, here in, in Canada. Um, you can tell from um, how they have operated, whether they're good or whether they're bad. And, and I think their record shows that they are mostly good. We had one really bad accident uh, in BC a couple of years ago. Um, but generally, these companies do a very, very good job of managing environmental risk, of mitigating it. Uh, they spend, you know, tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars on uh, uh, things like water treatment to make sure that water that's being discharged in the environment meets you know uh, better drinking water standards than than uh, what uh, people have available even in you know in some communities so I think we have a good mining industry the evidence uh, indicates that we do and, and they do a good job and I don't you know as far as somebody like mr. Suzuki or anybody uh, that's in that uh, that movement I uh, I've never ever noticed that they were supportive of any sort of resource extraction. Now, you can't name a mine that that the Suzuki Foundation thinks is a good idea, and I'm sure that they don't like big dams, and I'm sure they don't like any disruption um, of nature. But we have a, you know, we have a standard of living in this, you know, in the Western world that is that is based on, um, I think, uh, difficult but balanced choices that governments have made over the years to develop our natural resources to to uh, generate electricity in the most economic way you can, to get things out of the ground, to, to harvest trees. Um, if that all came to a screeching stop, um, I don't know, Mr. Suzuki probably have to pay a lot more taxes on his uh, various uh, houses that he has. It's great to see Minister Bennett aware of the hypocrisy of David Suzuki jetting around the world and to his multiple houses, no less. However, I am a bit skeptical, as with any project built and paid for by public money, and in this case BC Hydro and Site C, that it will be completed on budget. The minister talks about a contingency, but I'm almost certain to the point I'd be willing to bet the final price tag for this project will be exceeding $10 billion. For the Rebel Media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Hey, thanks so much for watching. You know, energy projects, whether it's hydroelectric, LNG, or oil sands development is crucial to the Western Canadian economy. And unlike the media party, you know here at The Rebel, we'll fight for the truth surrounding these issues. So make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel.